Hello, I'm Dr. Harry Croft. I'm a former Army psychiatrist in private practice here in San Antonio, Texas. Over the last 12 or 13 years, I've had the honor of evaluating more than 7,000 veterans for disability, most of whom suffer from PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. As a result of my experience with these vets, I, along with my co-author, Reverend Dr. Chris Parker, wrote the book, I Always Sit With My Back to the Wall, and its accompanying website, www.mybacktothewall.com, in order to help veterans and those who care for and about them better deal with post-traumatic stress disorder as a symptom or a disorder. But today, what I want to talk about is a another topic, and that is veterans in the workplace, especially veterans with PTSD going into the workplace. And it's a hot topic these days because many businesses are trying to hire veterans. It's a cool thing to do. You get a tax break. Uh, uh, it's the in thing to do right now, and many want to do right by our veterans by doing so. However, there are some issues involved, and that's what I'd like to talk about in this web log. So, I'm going to talk about uh, workplace issues from two different standpoints. That of the veteran, who is trying to get employed, and uh, that of the employer, who is hiring and employing the veteran. So, let's start with issues of surrounding the vets themselves. Number one, I think it's important for a veteran to recognize what their skill sets are. Many veterans tell me, look, I don't know what I can do. I was in the artillery. I was in the infantry. And they don't realize that in the military, they had to take training, both basic training and advanced training, so they're able to learn. They're able to work in groups. They're able to accomplish the mission. They're able to be dedicated to themselves, the service, and those around them. And all of those are skill sets that can be valuable in the workplace. So you do have skill sets as a veteran, and you need to project those to a potential employer. And you can learn how to do so in courses at most military bases or vet centers or VAs. Number two, I think... If you're going to be successful in the workplace, you have to understand the differences between the military community, the job you have been in, and the civilian community, the job you're going into, because there are very important differences. In the military, you're, rank, you're, you're recognized by the rank you wear on your sleeve or on your lapel, or by your time and grade, or by your job description, whereas in the civilian community, it may be very different. People may all dress alike. In, in the civilian community, you may be expected to socialize with your co-workers, something that you may not have had a chance to do in the military. And, and in the civilian job market, things may be a lot looser than they were in the military. In the military, you have to do everything by the book, whereas in the civilian world, sometimes it's not quite done that way. And military members transitioning to the civilian job force may misunderstand the actions of others as shirking or not caring, or the actions of their superiors as being disrespectful, something they couldn't put up with in the military. Number three, if you suffer from PTSD, I would encourage you to learn everything you can about PTSD to understand why you do some of the things you do. What are your symptoms and how might those symptoms affect you in the workplace? Because if you don't understand that, you're likely to get in trouble and be misinterpreted in the workplace. Your lack of wanting to be around other people's 
uh, uh, other people in the workplace may be seen as being antisocial. Nothing could be further than the truth from the truth, but I would encourage you understand your symptoms, understand that you can get help for them at the VA, the vet center, or you can go to websites uh, like the government VA website on PTSD or our website www.mybacktothewall.com to better understand PTSD and how the symptoms could get in the way if you don't understand and deal with them. And finally, I would encourage you as a veteran who are, who is going into the workplace to get yourself a support system. It could be on the web. It could be a mentoring site. It could be a coaching site. It could be a group of veterans that you get together with, but veterans who are also working, who can help you deal with some of the conflicts and problems, perhaps, that come up. You can ask, you know, this is what's happening to me, and another vet might say, wait a minute, I went through that, and let me tell you what I did, and it might just work for you. There are a lot of other things that we don't have time for. I'll talk about that later. If you're an employer who's trying to hire a veteran, I, I would ask you to try to understand the veteran, their skill sets, uh, the difference in culture between the military culture and the civilian culture. Uh, it might even be helpful to think about hiring vets in pairs or in groups because, you see, that's how they're used to working in the military environment with a group of other people uh, with similar backgrounds or similar job descriptions. And that group can become very helpful in assisting the vet to go forward in the business community. Uh, other people who are not vets may become so impressed they may want to join that vet group. Number two, I would ask you to try to learn about PTSD yourself. So that if you hire a vet who turns out to have PTSD, you'll know what the symptoms really are. That the vet is not trying to be obstinate. That the vet is not trying to be disrespectful. But there are reasons for the vet behaving the way they do. I would also encourage you not to give in to the myth, misconception, and stigma that surrounds PTSD. You know, over this past week, I've been doing a, a lot of national interviews on the tragedy that occurred in Afghanistan where the sergeant killed civilians. In all of my years of dealing with PTSD, and I actually started dealing with veterans more than 30 years ago who had PTSD, in all of my years I've seen those with mild, moderate, severe, and even very severe PTSD, and I have never, never seen anyone behave the way that the sergeant was described as behaving in Afghanistan. That, trust me, is not simply PTSD. And, and so I think it's important not to give in to the myth and misconception and therefore avoid hiring any veteran who's been in combat. We know that about one-fifth of veterans coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan may so suffer from symptoms of PTSD, some mild, others severe or very severe. But since we can't legally ask, do you have PTSD, it would be easy just to assume everyone coming back has the most severe type of PTSD. That's just not true. And it may get in the way of your hiring what, could, what might be a very valuable veteran employee. I would suggest that you develop symptoms in the workplace to help deal with some of the problems if they come up, the transitional problems, the PTSD symptom problems, by offering these vets somebody to talk to uh, where they don't have to worry they'll get into trouble, but a, a situation that might enable them to deal with their symptoms more effectively. Finally, if you're an employer, I would ask you to question, why am I wanting to hire these vets anyhow? 
Is it simply because of the tax breaks? Is it simply because it's a patriotic thing to do? Is it because it's good for business? Is it because I feel sorry for those guys and I just want to give them a shot? If those are the reasons, I would suggest you reconsider hiring vets. Many vets will pick up on that. They don't want to be considered charity cases. They want to be hired because they're the right person for the right job who can serve you and your company admirably and effectively. And so I would encourage you uh, to consider that as you, considering, as you consider hiring vets. And remember, uh, they have great skill sets that may be helpful to almost any business if they're placed in the right position, in the right environment, with the right people around them. There's so much more we could talk about, but I didn't want to make this weblog too long. I hope that in the future, you and I can get together again and talk more about this very important issue of hiring our veterans. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Harry Croft.